Because at a certain point in all your guys' career, you're going to only have X amount of opportunities left. And this is one of those. X amount left. Two left in our house. They forget what you do in September and October, man. And teams that want to be great, they make a statement in November. And here we go, right now, out the gate. We walk out of here, get those horns sharp, get that look in your eye, anything in white, destroy it. Touchdown, the Wildcats win. Northwestern needs a touchdown slant, they got it. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Pat Fitzgerald Show. I'm Dave Ennett. We're on Northwestern's campus in Evanston, right near the site where ground will be broken later this week on a new $260 million athletic and recreation complex. More on that later in the show. But the Wildcats had a big game Saturday against the Penn State Nittany Lions. Let's get right to the highlights with our Grossinger Auto Group first half highlights. We're getting ready for football here at Ryan Field between the Wildcats and the Penn State Nittany Lions. Bright sunshine, 50 degrees of West. Hackenberg will toss. Saquon Barkley tries to cut back, and he's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. He slipped. Hackenberg, Hackenberg looking, floats it down the left sideline, and it is broken up and almost intercepted by Matthew Harris. Yeah, I think we went five straight three and outs by our defense, uh, which is excellent. Great way to start the game. Move the ball pretty well offensively, miss a field goal, uh, stall out, and that was kind of a, a, an issue, and it, it comes up again in the second half offensively where we crossed the 50, but couldn't kind of punch it into the red zone, but from a start defensively, uh, exactly what we wanted to do. Snap to Thorson, rushes on. Thorson winds up, throwing the far side, leaping grab across the 45 of Penn State by the senior co-captain, Christian Jones, at a first down to the 44 the yard line. And meantime, we have Thorson shaken up. You know, it's, it's unfortunate, but you know, one man uh, getting banged up is another man's opportunity. And to see the way that Zach stepped up for the team uh, goes back to the way that he's been preparing all year and uh, really, really proud of the way that Zach played. The snap to Oliver, and he'll give Warren Long. Got the first, burst through, 45, far side, 40. Needs a block. He's to the 30, 25, 20. Long on his feet to the 15-yard line. Yeah, really good blocking at the point of attack. And, you know, Warren's able to kind of fit his way through and then bounces it out to the outside, and a great run by him. Nice block on the perimeter by Mike McHugh. Uh, and, and gives us a big explosive run to get us down in the red zone. Cats looking to score first. Snap to Oliver, gonna throw. Oliver with good protection, throws to the end zone. Touchdown, Christian Jones. About three yards deep, middle of the end zone. Yeah, really happy for Christian. You know, there's been a couple of weeks that he's had some challenges in the games and he's just stayed the course, had a big game on Saturday. Really needed him to step up here as we go into the stretch run. And like I told the team, they forget what you do in September and October and they remember what you do in November. And uh, a great first uh, first game for, for Christian. Hackenberg giving on a delay. Barkley hit in the backfield, trying to get away and he can't. Here's the snap, Zach Oliver will give Jackson left side to the 15-20. Nothing but open field in front, 35-40, 45-50. Jackson is pushed out of bounds, just across midfield. Snap to Zach Oliver, he'll give Jackson running left to the 25-20, 15, cuts it back inside at the five and thrown down inside the five of the one yard line. The great blocking at the point of attack on the first play, you know, really springs us with that explosive run. and. Uh, he wanted the touchdown there, and, uh, but uh, wasn't able to get it. And you know, good call by by Mick, and you know, running uh, a read play that uh, you know makes them have to be really disciplined down in the, in the tight zone. And you know, Zach pulls it and, and gets in the end zone for uh, for a big touchdown. Second down a goal, and it'll be Oliver taking it himself for the touchdown. Zach Oliver, terrific call. Everybody in the stadium. Thought Warren Long was getting the football, and Oliver walked in. Little Wildcat here. And Barkley will take it himself to the five, into the end zone, touchdown Penn State. And just like that, the Nittany Lions get on the board here. They will kick off here, a squib kick, and it'll be taken around the five. Ball bobbles, picks it up. Back to the 10, works his way along the numbers to the 20, 25-30. He's to the 45-50. He's got nothing but green in front of him. And Solomon Ball 
to the 10, to the 5, to the house. Touchdown! Solomon Vault takes it all the way. And we needed a response and, and uh, great blocking at the point of attack on the kickoff return by first Joe Jones. Our double teams were really good. And then, you know, Garrett Dickerson comes over and, and um, Danny Vitale, two great blocks at the point of attack and, you know, solos out the gate. Halftime 20 to seven. The Wildcats will get the ball first to start the third quarter. Still to come on the Pat Fitzgerald Show. We'll take a look back at Saturday's second half. But first, Northwestern announced last week that it will break ground Friday on a new $260 million facility that will integrate athletics into the heart of the Evanston campus. Here's what Vice President for Athletics and Recreation, Jim Phillips, had to say about the project. Our student athletes will literally be on campus and have to walk 200 yards to go over and meet their academic counselor or go over to get a meal or go talk to their coach or look at film or get a lift in. So again, I think it's enhancing their day-to-day -day lives and the lives of the coaches that support them. Our program has never been supported the way that it is. Uh, my hard hat and work boots are already up in my office. Uh, so I got those a couple weeks ago and uh, just excited. I mean, it's, it's a game changer for us uh, from a standpoint that our campus and our student athletes, all of our student athletes are now fully integrated. And I think that shows the commitment of being one Northwestern. I like to think I can sing. Uh, occasionally I do, but I can't do it on the spot, so don't ask. <laughs> I think it'll be coaching. I'm a great coach. And playing video games. I may be the best man player on the team. My hidden talent is that uh, a lot of people don't know I can cook very well. I got many hidden talents, um, and that's why they're hidden. You don't get to know. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I am the best dunker here at Northwestern University. I mean, you know, I know we got some guys on the basketball team who, you know, do their thing, but I'm pretty sure I got them. I'm a great dancer, so it's kind of deceiving. You know, I'm a kind of tall, um, you know, awkward looking dude, but I can get down pretty low. I can dance really well, so uh, that's my hidden talent. <laughs> Which is not true. I can't dance at all, so. <laughs> yes, I actually do have uh, some hidden talents. I play the recorder, and I'm totally not prepared. Go, cats. Welcome back to the Pat Fitzgerald Show. Northwestern led Penn State 20 to seven at halftime Saturday. Let's get right back to the exciting second half with our Discover Card second half highlights. Everybody cool? Everybody good? Everybody State booting left to right. Time for our second half kickoff. Berg on third down. Now under pressure, hit. He releases the ball incomplete. This time Oliver will give Jackson running right. Jackson 45-50 and Jackson inside the 40, inside the 35. Here's the snap. Here is the kick by Mitchell and over end and the kick is no good. Yeah, just self-inflicted wounds. We miss a throw, great call, guy wide open. We get bad snap. I mean, we just, it, it kind of became a reoccurring theme. You know, we cross the 50, all three possessions and all three come out with no points where we really had a chance, I think, to, to, to grab the game and, and, and put it in, onto our sideline. And, and they'll give it off Polk. Now the double reverse. The ball was batted down, then picked up. Lewis throwing it downfield, and it's caught at the five, and a touchdown to Sean Hamilton. We gave them momentum, and, and credit Penn State. They captured it, but, you know, we just go and give the momentum away in the game, in the Big Ten. You cannot do that. And, uh, as we found out pretty quickly, once we gave it away, we had to do something special to get it back. Back to throw, Hackenberg, hit and sacked! Down he goes, Anthony Walker! He scored out of this formation earlier and he will try to do it again. Down to the 10, ducks outside of the 5 or the end zone, and, and touchdown Penn State. Like I talked to him as we started the fourth quarter, you know, we, you, you work too hard all week not to go out and win a football game, so let's go play the way we're capable of and empty the tank and go make some plays. Shotgun formation, snap to Hackenberg. Hackenberg looking to the right side, intercepted! Nick Van Hoos, a leaping interception! And down at the 32-yard line. There's the big play the Wildcats needed. 
on third down and long. Snap to Oliver. Oliver floats it down the far side. Got a man wide open. Caught inside the 40. Austin Carr. Big throw, big catch by AC. And, you know, now we're, uh, we're knocking on the door to put ourselves in a field goal range. And Here's the snap. And they'll give Jackson big hole left side. Inside the 30, down to the 25. First down. First down, 106 to go. You know, really good calls by Mick as we go down the stretch and uh, put the ball in position to center it for Jack. And For the lead. The snap, the placement, the kick by Jack Mitchell. On the way, the kick is good! And the Wildcats take the lead with nine seconds to go. That's huge. Yeah, it's, it's critically important that you have a short memory as an athlete. You know, you got to learn from your previous experiences, but uh, what's done is done and you have to move on. And uh, this play is the most important play, not the play that happened in the rearview mirror. And it's easy to say, but it takes a mature, confident uh, player to be able to do that. And, and Jack's got great confidence. He's, he's very unflappable. He wasn't down on the boundary. We just talked about what he needed to do. Is it your plant foot? Is it, is it the angle? You know, from a standpoint of him going out and doing his job, I'm proud of him. Snap to Hackenberg. Hackenberg throwing over the middle. Leaping grab, Godwin. Now here's a lateral, and now a bobble and a fumble, and the Wildcats have it, and the Wildcats win! Anthony Walker recovers the fumble on the final play of the game, and the Cardiac Cats pull it out here in Evanston by a final score of 23 to 21. Find a way to win is, is what you have to do in Big Ten games, and you know we win and we move on. So you know on to senior week. Final numbers from the Wildcats' 23-21 win. Justin Jackson shouldered a big load on offense, rushing 28 times for 186 yards. After entering the game late in the first quarter, Zach Oliver ended up with 111 passing yards and two total touchdowns. On defense, Nick Van Hoos had another big game, an interception and six tackles for the Wildcats. Time now to go inside the locker room after the game. This is your Northwestern Medicine Inside Look. But I don't usually do this, as you guys know, right? I don't do it. Hey, Salem, yeah. where are you at? <laughs> Today, boys, we got three more left. Let's get it. Yeah. You just got to try to not let yourself get down at all, even though you're not doing well, stuff like that. But just stay up. Know that, I mean, Fitz was telling me the whole game, you're going to be um, coming up big for us at the end of the game. Like, people are coming up to me, just like, keep your head in it. But yeah, just try to stay as focused and calm as possible. I'm always ready. I'm always watching. I, I try to keep my, my focus in the game as much as I can, watching all the plays, so that when he comes off the sideline that I can tell him what I saw, um, be a good teammate as much as I can. So I, I saw him stay down, um, so I just I strapped up. I mean, put my helmet on. Those two penalties like were not who we, uh, we are as a defense. So uh, after that touchdown, we came to the sideline, regrouped, settled down, and uh, we just got back to what we do, and just playing physical, tough defense and, and playing smart and disciplined. So, um, I think after that, uh, we were calm and collected, and I think it's, uh, we responded well. After the break, the Wildcats get a practice treat by playing a trick on the coaching staff. Stick around. Welcome back, everybody. The recent bye week gave Northwestern players a chance to focus on academics and also heal their bodies. But because of how the calendar fell this year, it also gave them a chance to have a little fun at practice. Take a look. I thought about maybe having some fun on Friday, so I grabbed the seniors and the leadership council after practice, and uh, I was a little demonstrative uh, with them. Uh, and it was all for show, making the rest of the team and the, co and the assistant coaches, most importantly, think that I felt like practice didn't go very well. Uh, 
So did a bunch of winking with those guys and said, listen, if everybody shows up in a costume tomorrow, we will just walk through the game plan stuff and we won't practice, but everybody's got to show up in a costume. <laughs> Guys pulled it off. I was getting text messages all Thursday night. We got it. It's all done. We're ready. Yeah, yeah. Me and Connor, we're, we're sitting there thinking about something that could be funny to do. We thought it would be kind of funny, you know, pull one over on, on Coach Fitz and Cody and, and come out as them. I kind of just walked around with a grimace on my face, uh, uh, looking serious, uh, looking like Coach Fitz on practice day on uh, if we were in full pads. Um, getting people going. Wait, wait, wait. Can we get in? All right. Let's go. All right. Mick, get in there. Big day in preparation. We're not going to be out here long. All right, let's get some work in. <laughs> we come out of the tunnel. We all, you know, tap, tap the trust yourself board. Everybody has their own little routine, how they, how they tap it. And it's just kind of, you know, a reminder when you're going out there, trust yourself. But Cody just stands at the end of the tunnel, straight face with the sunglasses on, just stands there, doesn't move. And players, you know, come by and hit it. Uh, well, it was really funny because Cody was actually wearing exactly what I was wearing. So he thought it was hilarious. And when Coach Fitz saw Connor, Connor had his, his you know, the, the shades like tilted up like Coach does. All the coaches and Coach Fitz and Cody got a, got a kick out of it. Wow. Wow. I tell you. Wow. Wow. Great job by the old guys uh, getting things accomplished. But that's what football's all about. Having fun, you know, on the eve of Halloween, enjoying, enjoying just uh, being a, a part of something special. College football here at a great university and sharing that camaraderie time together. It was fun. And some interesting outfits and some, some unique uh, personalities. You learn a lot about what people wear as their costumes. a lot of fun, especially seeing Connor Mahoney. Uh, you know, I appreciate uh, his impersonation. I, I, he needs to lose some weight, though, if he wants to be me, but that's okay. It's always awesome when a plan comes into uh, fruition. Huh? Yeah. Nice yeah. job. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Did you knuckleheads know? Well played. Well played. Well played. Well played. Coming up next, we're gearing up for Senior Day at Evanston, and Purdue is headed to town. We'll talk about the Boilermakers next. Looking down the middle, it's intercepted. Back the other way from the Wildcats. To the 20, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown! Do you believe it? The Cardiac Cats have struck again. Welcome back to the Pat Fitzgerald Show. The nationally ranked Northwestern Wildcats close out the 2015 home schedule this weekend as the Purdue Boilermakers come to Ryan Field Saturday. The Boilermakers are 2-7 and seven on the season, but just a week removed from a 10-point win over Nebraska in which their offense scored 55 points. Head coach Daryl Hazel has handed starting quarterback duties over to David Blau this season. The redshirt freshman has thrown for nearly 1,300 yards and nine touchdowns. Markel Jones has led the way on the ground for Purdue, averaging over 70 yards per game and scoring seven touchdowns. On defense, Leroy Clark leads the team in tackles and also has seven pass breakups. Purdue averages over six tackles for loss per game, and Evan Panfill leads the team with four sacks. Saturday will be senior day for the Wildcats, one last chance for the class of 2016 to play at Ryan Field in front of their home crowd. Big week for us here, great group of guys that are uh, very thankful for all that they've contributed to our program, uh, on the field obviously, but more importantly off the field. You know, so many guys in graduate school, incredibly active in the community. Uh, and this weekend will be a great celebration, not only for them, but, but also probably more importantly, their families. You know, a lot of the guys pregame and have a great celebration at, at, uh, at the house after the game on Saturday night. 
uh, just saying thank you. Thank you to the young men, thank you to their families for their trust, and hopefully we re repaid them uh, as much as they've, they've given to us as a program and a university. And so, special week and, and kind of weird timing, you know, with, with uh, you know, two games to follow, but uh, at the same time, it'll be a very special week for those guys. Yeah, much improved football team. It's not showing up in the record. Uh, you know, they've settled in a young quarterback. He's very similar to Danny Persa uh, for our fans. You know, he's very athletic, very accurate, understands what they're doing schematically, uh, very physical up front, playing, uh, I think, very, very well in the perimeter. They've got guys that can score every play. Their defense is very aggressive. Played very well two weeks ago against Nebraska, a team that, you know, quite frankly, we couldn't move the ball very well on, and, and they had great success against Nebraska. It was very impressive uh, to watch that tape, and, and Coach Hazel's a terrific coach, and, and uh, he's got a great staff. So going to be a huge challenge like it is every week in the Big Ten, but, you know, from our focus, it's on us. We've got to have a great week of preparation going back into a normal game week, uh, taking the emotions of senior week and, and controlling them the right way and, and uh, using that uh, fuel as great motivation to go out and play our best game of the year. Well, that's all the time we have for the program this week. A reminder, the Wildcats host Purdue Saturday for Senior Day. The Senior Day festivities will begin around 1040 a.m. And there are still tickets remaining. Just log on to nusports.com or call 888-GO-PURPLE. Now for Coach Fitz, I'm Dave Ennett. Thanks as always for watching. We'll see you right back here next week. And as always, Go Cats!